Today we're going to talk about treatment of dry eye, focus on uh, some basics and some more advanced uh, matters that you may have heard about, you may not have heard of, to go into a little bit of detail that is often overlooked. And I find in my patients who come to me who often have seen two or three doctors that if they're not doing well with the treatment they're on, they may not always be doing it the right way. And by focusing on, on refining those details, I hope that we can help some of you today. The, uh, the topics will be, as I said, some basic questions that patients ask me. We'll start with and then we're going to talk about really the three different types of dry eye, water deficiency, oil deficiency. We'll just touch on mucus deficiency and then talk about another subject, mechanical masquerade syndromes. What I mean by that are conditions that are not really dry eye, but can behave like a dry eye, and that are often misdiagnosed as dry eye, and when treated appropriately, often can relieve symptoms in a way that uh, no other dry eye treatment can. So when I think about dry eye, I don't think about so much quantity of tears as the name dry eye implies. I think more it's an issue of quality of tears or an imbalance in the tears that we have. And you have to understand that there are three layers to the tears, oil, water, and mucus, and we'll touch on this again. And an imbalance of any one of these can lead to very severe symptoms. We all know probably that age, hormonal changes, medications, environmental factors, and a number of diseases can cause dry eye. But one thing I'd encourage each of you to do if you suffer from dry eyes, think about, do some research on your own on the medications you take. Uh, think about the environment around you because you may be overlooking some important things that are, are contributing to your dry eye. Don't count necessarily on your doctors to go through your list of medication in exhaustive detail. Do that yourself. Look at each one. Go to the internet. That's an enormously useful tool to find out what the side effects of each medication are. Ask your doctors about them to find out if one, something you're taking may be partly or completely causing your problems. This is a question I get all the time. Why does it blur my vision? Uh, the reason dry eye blurs your vision more than anything else is because of an optical phenomenon. Think of the surface of this lake that you see, and it's almost perfectly reflecting the scenery behind it, isn't it? And that's because it's glassy smooth, the surface of the water. This glassy smooth surface is a, is a reflecting surface. It's an optical surface. And without it, if, if a person puts a toe in the water or, or just creates a ripple effect across this lake, as you see toward the back where the weeds are, where the, where the lily pads are, it doesn't reflect nearly as well. The image is lost, isn't it? Well, the very same thing happens on the surface of your eye. The most important uh, refracting or focusing surface is the front of your eye where the tears are. It's not the eye, it's actually the tears. And when they're dry or rippled or deficient, it blurs your vision tremendously. Now, by the way, one, one thing I want to stop to, to do is uh, let you know that a lot of the information I'm going to share with you today in this talk is also available in another place. It's on the website for my practice, harvardeye.com. Harvardeye.com is uh, um, on the web, and there's a section on dry eye that's fairly extensive. So if you tend to forget, you, uh, you don't need to worry about taking notes so extensively. Here's another question I get all the time. A gentleman wanted me to answer this. Uh, already today. How can my eyes be dry when they water all the time? Well, this is one of the most common symptoms of dry eye is, is that they water. And here's why. It, your tears and your, your eyes are a balance. There's, there's a lacrimal gland here. Can you all see the screen? At the top of the screen in the picture is a lacrimal gland. That's one of the places where tears are produced. That produces the major volume of tears. And then there are ducts here in the inner corner of the eyelid. You can see them if you look very carefully with magnification. Those ducts carry the tears away. This is like a faucet and a drain. It's like a sink here together. And uh, what happens when the tears are producing too much, my pointer's not showing up real well, but when the, when the tears from the gland are producing too much, the eye will run over because it's, it's like overflowing the sink. Uh, now, uh, when your eyes are in a normal state, when they're not, when they're throughout the day, they're producing a, a level of tears at what we call baseline tear secretion. And that secretion of tears is meant to keep your eye bathed over a, the, the period of time and, and to respond to the normal irritants that we're exposed to. But if our eyes become dry, either because the tear production is going down or because the environment is causing more evaporation or more loss of tears, what happens is we cross a threshold where our eyes then react. 
and then they then flood. And that causes a reactive tear secretion. So we go from baseline to reactive tear secretion, and we can have a whole flood of tears. Think about if you get something in your eye, how watery they become suddenly. That's reactive tearing. It's a, a reflex that's built into our bodies to allow us to uh, react to foreign bodies to help wash them out of our system. Another reason your eyes may water is because of a problem in the anatomy of this tear, tear drainage system. If there's a blockage in the, in the drain of the sink, guess what? Your tears are going to overflow, just like the sink backs up. So you have to look at all those things when considering why the eyes water. Uh, will I be like this forever? I never had dry eye before, and now it's bothering me. Well, we hope not. Remember that seasonal changes, medications, and a number of things that change throughout our lives can cause your dry eye to become better or worse. And so don't give up hope and realize that uh, next month or in the next couple of months, your dry eye may be better. Why are my eyes worse when I first wake up? How many of you have this problem? Yeah, it's a common thing. A couple of things, and I'm, I'm going through this because these are the things that are often overlooked by our patients, often overlooked by our doctors. Number one thing to think about, ceiling fans or any sort of air that is blowing on you while you sleep, air conditioner, vents, ducts, are, will dry your eyes out when you lie in that position for eight hours or more. Uh, so turn them off or direct, them, direct the airflow another way. Putting a humidifier in the room where you sleep is the kindest thing you can do to yourself to reduce the irritation. And lastly, are your eyes closed when you sleep? Uh, if there's someone there you can ask to look, have, have your uh, significant other take a look and see if your eyes are truly closed. If you're not sure, you can actually take a little tape, a piece of medical tape, and tape it across to close your eyes to, uh, to make sure that, uh, that they are closed. Indeed, this is a, a great source of frustration to some people, and they never treat it until they think about one of these three things. So think about that. 